Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, it looks like you can. So let's try this for the fourth fucking time. Hey, oh, let's go. Hi artists, welcome back. This is my fourth time. Fourth time recording this intro. Uh, had a microphone issue, got all the way upstairs to edit it and... <laughs> so here I am again. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get over it and just smile and do it again. So anyways, hello, how are you? If you are a faithful subscriber, welcome back. If you are not and you're new, hello, I'm Jane, I'm an artist. Hopefully you are too, and if not, then I hope that I can help you bridge the gap between your mm, novice and skill set. So maybe you'll even discover that you have a talent that you never knew you had. So today's focus is on Andrew Loomis. Now, if you're not familiar with Andrew Loomis, please, please look him up. He left such a legacy of amazing artwork and he knew everything. He was a master, a modern master, 20th century master. And what I mean by that is that he could draw multiple types of people. We're talking babies, teenagers, men, women, old people. Uh, he could cartoon, he knew color theory, he could oil paint, he was insane. I mean, just insane with talent, he knew perspective. Uh, that's just, that's crazy. One person to know so many different things. He was probably one of the most versatile artists. But what we're gonna focus on today is women. Now, I've always drawn women pretty intuitively, but whenever I learned Andrew Loomis's method, it just seemed to make things so much more easier for me. And so hopefully that will make it easier for you too. Um, please don't skip out on getting this book though, because this is an awesome book. It's Drawing the Head and Hands, and it's got a plethora of knowledge in it, and I haven't even tapped into everything. Maybe we'll do another video where I'm doing actually a challenge of just drawing men's heads and kind of teaching you how to do that as well and then go from there maybe you can learn along with me what I want to do today is just kind of show you a basic way of drawing a female head just straight on and maybe we'll even get into a profile I'm not sure however what really really helped me with his method is kind of being able to line up everything and then just sort of falls into place. That's really what his work was about, was really kind of simplifying things so that people could learn to draw and learn to express themselves from getting from one place to another. So if you have trouble with the human head, as far as like proportions go, maybe you got one eye that's wonky sometimes, or maybe you just start drawing and the lips are off a little bit, this is going to help you out tremendously. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Go ahead and grab yourself a sketchbook if you're gonna follow along. If not, just enjoy the video, okay? All right, let's go. So I have an example for you already. Um, I'm going to show you how, why these lines are significant and why I left them in there, but uh, they have a lot to do with the ball method. So, you know, she doesn't have an upside down cross in her forehead or anything like that. <laughs> But I will erase them later for demonstration purposes. I'm going to draw you another example of a woman and hopefully you can follow along and this will be a fairly easy demonstration for you that you can use to work on your skill. So you want to start by drawing a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to kind of try and get it decently round. Okay, and I'm doing this next to this to show you that this part, which is the bottom, from here to wherever your chin will end, is kind of this area is where the jaw will be. So Andrew Loomis's method was called the ball method, and that the human head is shaped like a ball, essentially in order to use that as a groundwork for your portraits. You kind of want to get this probably about two thirds of the way up and that'll be your cross. And that actually is where your brow line is, kind of as you see here. Now, I'm not exactly technical on the measurements as much as he was, which is probably maybe part of the reason why he was, he's a master, but <laughs> I'm getting there. But you can use a ruler. We've got about almost a half an inch between the middle of the eyes where the eyeball is and the brow line. So if I go over here and go about halfway down, that's where, those are where my eyes are gonna be. This is where my brow line is gonna be. And then we're going to put the nose, the end of the nose, 
right about a half inch, about a half inch below that eye line. Now, I'm going to make a little bit of a correction here, make this a little bit larger here. As I said, this is a practice, and practice is not perfect. I continuously make adjustments. You know, it just depends on what kind of space you want between your nose and your mouth, but we're going to play this one by ear. It's kind of where you want your mouth to be. Now, I've got about, about to here, about three-eighths of an inch down is where your chin will be. Now. Keep in mind, this is not necessarily the top of the head. This is just kind of where the hairline should be. But the actual top of the head kind of extends up a little bit because we're going to want a hairline here. And this is where you kind of get to start to have fun here. And right about here where this ball starts to curve in is, keep in mind that's where like cheekbones are. And you can kind of gauge whether you want higher cheekbones or not. I'm gonna start to draw in the jawline. Typically, um, those who identify as women have softer jaw lines. And although it's not quite as wide as her jaw line, that's okay because no two faces are quite alike. I wasn't looking to make a twin of her, but just to kind of demonstrate. Now, what I like to do to kind of get some perspective is to just go ahead and draw the neck in. And I usually start at about right where, right where either the jaw begins right here, or maybe a little bit smaller. Just depends on how you want your woman to look. You don't want the neck to be too thick though, because that does not come off very feminine. So let's go back up here and start on the eyes. I like to start with the eyes because I feel like they really are one of those things that if you make sure that your li eyes line up and everything looks good, everything sort of falls into place after that, so. A wise person once told me that. So I'm going to just start drawing circles to represent the eyes. You kind of want to make sure that, you know, they're, they don't have to be perfectly centered, but if you've got this right here, you kind of want to gauge and make sure that like, you know, from the sides of the heads, there's enough space there. And you can always adjust it too if you don't want to move the eyes around. So like this side is a little bit shorter than this side. So what I will do is make this a little bit bigger, come back over here and maybe adjust this just a little bit. That's a lot easier than having to draw your eyes over again. That's a trick that I learned. So let's go ahead and start to draw the shape of the eyes. We're going to go for some almond shaped eyes today just for representation. Now I could do a separate video on the size and shapes of eyes. This is just for demonstration purposes. So you kind of want to make sure that your eyes are kind of an almond shaped or you can just draw them however you want to if you're a little bit more advanced. You can do round, more round shaped eyes. You can do uh, more of like a monolid or however you want to my the eyes on my women tend to be a little bit bigger or just kind of average so the middle line kind of goes right through that almond shaped and what I like to do is kind of create the bridge of the nose here just to kind of set my foundation for what's going to frame 
around the eyes. It also sets up the foundation for where you want your brows to start. Now, as a general rule, I like to make sure that my eyebrows on my portraits kind of start where the actual beginning of the eyelid starts. It doesn't have to be that way always, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, don't don't waste your time spending a lot of time nitpicking on the details. You can fill those in later. This is just to kind of get your general groundwork done. And, you know, every, fra every face is a little bit different, and eyebrows are very, very unique. You can do a whole video on those. So I, I'm starting this today right about here. So where's, there's where the star of the eyebrows are. Okay. Let me go up and... Let's kind of just fill this in a little bit. A nice arch is always good, but it just it's not necessary. You can have kind of either, you know, eyebrows that kind of go straight out or have a little bit of a curve to them, but maybe not necessarily an arch. I like to draw arched eyebrows. Um, however, depending on the rest of the face, sometimes an arched eyebrow can come off kind of, you know, angry looking or bitchy looking or however you want to interpret it as. So we kind of want to keep things a little bit soft today. And okay, so this particular nose ended right about here. And we've got this line. I'm going to take it down just a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to kind of just draw a dip here for the bottom of the nose. Now we're filling in the nostrils right about here. And in Andrew Loomis's book, he talks about um, women looking feminine and having soft features. And he says, to, as a general rule, to keep the noses smaller than men. I personally feel like it's up to you as the artist to do whatever you want to do. I mean, some women have larger noses than others. That's just how it goes. And, you know, he's kind of just talking in, in general about, like, what aesthetically was beautiful at that time. We have a much more open, diverse idea of what beautiful is. So draw however you want to draw as far as the nose is concerned and the size. I like to keep mine fairly average to smaller, but um, I try to actually expand on the bridge of the nose in some portraits and make different size noses so that they don't all look the same. Um, we all kind of have a default whenever we get a style going. So, let's see, hers is going to be larger than hers. But as a general kind of idea, I'm going to draw on the sides here, the side of the nose, kind of curving up. Now, if you don't like the size, you can always shade in things later on. So, don't worry about that. So, I know I said earlier that this is kind of where the lips begin or end. Uh, I believe I said that that's where the lips start. It It is up to you. You can, because this right here, this is where her lips are right in the middle. I kind of just go by intuition. I feel like this space, to me, it appears to be a little bit too close for it to actually like be up here. What kind of will give you an idea of what looks acceptable to you Personally, it's your taste, but it's also when people smile, their muscles in their cheekbones go up and out. So you want to make sure that you leave enough space between the nose and the mouth to kind of leave it to where it looks fairly normal. Keep in mind that whenever, you know, if, if your portrait was to be a smiling portrait, then the actual space between the nose and the mouth would shorten. That's what I'm getting at. So Let's go ahead and kind of erase this right here. And we will dip this down just a little bit. Normally I wouldn't draw this back in, but I'm just doing this for demo purposes. So right about here is where the actual parting of the lips will be. Make sure that the sides of the mouth have some space because of the way that um, people's mouths are. They tend to kind of have a little bit more 
fleshiness towards the the corners of their mouth. There's more space there. Now here I've aligned the corners of the mouth kind of where the iris begins. And that's kind of where, generally speaking, um, the corners of the mouth line up with, is either with the beginning of the iris or like right in the middle. Because you'll notice, especially with men, like their actual like structure and their facial structure will, they tend to have bigger features, so, and stronger ones too. So typically the corners of the mouth will line up with their eyes. For example, like here on the cover, he's got the corners of her mouth kind of lining up with the very beginning of her eyes right there. And the wider the jaw, the bigger the lips. So if you're wondering why maybe sometimes you're having trouble with portraits in lining up features, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. For example, now he just, he had such a wonderful way of drawing character with his portraits as well. So like this guy, his, he's smiling, right? But not a full smile. But if you take a look, since he's spreading out his, you know, his mouth here, it kind of lines up more with the middle of his eye right here. However, Mr. Dapper Dan here, um, his, the corner of his mouth, the corners of his mouth here kind of line up with his eyes, like the beginning of his iris. Of course, this is not a straight on portrait, but you get the idea, I believe. If not, then here we go. Like, here's another guy. See? We've got the corners of the mouth lining up with the beginning of the iris. Okay. I made one of her... Move her eyes a little bit too bigger than the other one. So we're going to fix that up real quick. More almond shaped. Okay, here we go. Now, back to this portrait. I'm going to go ahead and start drawing the eyes. And I can have one video specifically dedicated to eyes. I've been wanting to do that actually, I just haven't done it yet. Okay. Right about the middle, we're going to draw the pupil. She doesn't look that great right now, but that's okay. We'll do some shading. Shading ha happens to do a lot of magic. So if you're finding yourself getting impatient with your portraits, just remember shading has a lot to do with your final touch and how it'll actually look. And also being able to draw eyelashes and the lids and everything. So let's go ahead and draw the lids. Now I could do a whole video on lids themselves. We're going to make sure that her lids kind of more, they're not going to be super deep set. They're kind of going to be a little more on the average side. Hers are a little bit more hooded and small. We're going to fill this in right here. There, she doesn't look so crazy. And deepen this. Get a little bit more shading here. And, and keep in mind, whenever you put more depth on the actual eyelid, that places it back further in the head. I'll go into that in another video. But uh, so hers are kind of average shaped, but more deep set within her skull. So I like to kind of draw the lower lips fuller than the top lip. And sometimes, like, for example, some women have full lips, just as, like, on the cover here, she kind of has the same shape and fullness to her lips. 
So it kind of all depends on your style. Fill in the lips here. And this is the, the bow of the lips here. I'm gonna, gonna curve up here into a little Cupid's bow. Really nice shaped lips here. Now we're gonna flush out the features a little bit more. The skull here, it actually kind of comes in where the cheekbones are, at least on her head. It's not always like that. That's what makes, you know, portraits for some people so difficult is because even though you can demonstrate all day long how to draw faces to people, every face is different, you know, and even though like a skull has a general shape, which is what we try to aim for, you know, sometimes we, we see people with, you know, wider shaped faces and, and bigger heads than some others, you know, and some people have very slim, you know, long faces and it's kind of crazy that way. Okay, so now we kind of have her general face shape and her features kind of fleshed out. She's still looking a little plain. Give her a little bit more personality. That's what I was kind of looking for. She doesn't really, she just kind of looks like a little mechanical robot head at this point. I haven't got her ears completely shaped out. But on the side of the head, which I'll show you in an overlay that uh, he has, Andrew Loomis talks about how the ears line up with about where, around like the beginning of the brow line and the very top of the eyes. So if you're having trouble with ears, that's a general rule. Curve up here. Women have smaller ears than men. They generally come down to about here. Okay, so here's the top of her head. Now we're gonna figure out what kind of a hairstyle we're gonna give her. If you wanna make it easy, you can kinda just do some swoopy lines, just like I did here with Kate Moss. <laughs> she kinda looks like her, oh well. Or if you're not really into drawing hair, you can always give your women kind of a short hairdo. That's always an option. If you're not a big fan of ears, that's fine too. You can always kind of, if they look funny to you, you can always kind of cover them up with your hair. It'll kind of swoop over her shoulder. How pretty is that? Okay. In Andrew Loomis's book, he kind of actually goes more in depth with the different angles. So he will like, for example, start out with, you know, the actual X being the brow point right there. And then you can kind of sketch to where, you know, you want the angle of the face. And we can get into that in another video. But for right now, what we're focusing on right now is just a front and center kind of a portrait. So like one more time, cross is where the brow bone is in the middle of the face. Goes straight down. The bottom of the ball kind of ends where the cheekbones and the mouth meet. And this is where he kind of begins to sculpt the head out. You start to line up your features. Hey guys, so this is Editing Jane. And I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to give you a separate video on shading. So if you're wondering why, okay, we were drawing this head and then all of a sudden it's got shading on it. I was actually not very happy with the end result of this shading. So, um, or this actual drawing, the shading was fine. I just didn't care for the actual portrait that I did. I'm very critical of myself as... Some of you artists understand how that is. So I'm going to create a separate video for you guys to learn a little bit more about on shading, and then we can kind of go from there. 
So to preserve time and let things kind of flow a little bit more naturally, as I went a little overboard with this tutorial, so I'm going to just kind of split this up into two things, separate subject matters. And so we can go from there. And I really, really appreciate you guys watching the video. Give it a like if you enjoyed it and you actually learned something. And I kind of gave you, gave you a little bit of insight onto how to sculpt the head. And thanks to Andrew Loomis, and his genius, we can all draw a little bit better. So thank you for watching today. Hit the subscribe button if you wanna hear some more and see some more, and I will talk to you soon. Artists, keep creating. Artists. But today what we're gonna focus on is drawing the, today, but today, <laughs> oh, so many bloopers. This actually flowed really well the third time that I did this. So, you know, what are you gonna do? I'm very sniffly today. But we're <laughs> okay. So what <laughs> winged it, you know, over the years, and then just kind of built on my own way of basically constructing the human head. And they always seem to be very um, female in nature, and so that I'm just rambling on like I usually do, pretty much. Color theory, cartooning, drawing portraits, and portraits of multiple different types of people. I can't, I can't talk today. We're just gonna focus on women today because that's kind of what I know. Because <laughs> who wants to go outside their comfort zone anyways, right? <laughs> so maybe we'll do some men, men, men. I will talk to you soon. You have a wonderful day and I'll be right back as soon as I'm done teaching you this. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe we'll just go through and I'll just fuck around and